God, we praise you. Yes. And we invite yes. you, the family, again to this celebration Hallelujah. service. Hallelujah. What a glorious day it is. Hallelujah. What a glorious time that we have oh, to yes, celebrate yes. our Father, our Savior, and the Holy Spirit, the triune God. We give glory to him. Doesn't matter what we're going through. We give glory to him. We celebrate it because he's worthy of all yes. praise. He's worthy of the glory. He's worthy of the blessing. All honor belongs to him. What a great honor it is for to be able to come into your house again one more time. So thankful for God giving us this opportunity. Even as we sing these songs of Zion, we're just so thankful to God that we can lift up his name yet one more time. Yes, yes. God, somebody has gone home, and that's a glorious place to be. But while we're in the land of the living, we desire to celebrate him. Some of us have struggles, and we need to just come out of those things. God is causing us to walk in increase. This is the day of increase, and we will walk in increase. We will celebrate, and we will come out of that thing. COVID is underneath our feet. Financial lack is underneath our feet. We're going to walk in increase. Anything that we're dealing with, we're going to walk in increase. We're going to walk in increase in the name of Jesus. Oh, just lift your hands wherever you are and give the name of God glory. He is worthy of all praise. He is worthy to be celebrated. We give him the glory this day. Come on and bless our, his name with us today. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How many believe the promises of God? They're coming your way. We thank God.
It's a new day, a fresh anointing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's flowing my way. Yeah, it's a season of power and prosperity. It's a new season. It's coming to me. It's a new season. It's a new day, a fresh anointing is flowing my way. It's a season of power and prosperity. It's a new season. Yes. It's a new season. Hallelujah. It's a new season. It's a new season. Come on. When the devil's time is up, no longer will he bother me. Yes. Cause the controller of the universe, he bothers me. And it's transferable. My children's children will be free. It's a new season. It's a new season. All that was stolen is returned to you a hundredfold. Tried in the fire, but you're coming out. Go. Cling to his hand. Yes, every promise take a hold. It's a new season. It's a new season. It's a new day. Anointing is flowing my way. It's a season of power and prosperity. It's a new season. 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 Come on. I'm coming out. Yes, yes, yes. I'm coming.
Church family, Facebook family, we just welcome you. Thank you for joining in with us on this morning. As our praise and worship team was going forward, this is a new season. This is a new day. And we are coming out. There is a fresh anointing. There will be power. And there will be prosperity. So I just want to welcome you. Thank you for joining with us. We miss all of you. And we just want to just say a word of encouragement to you on today the first song that the worship team sung it said I trust you Lord I trust you Lord and I'm walking in increase and I just want to encourage someone today that Proverbs 3 and 5 it tells us to trust in the Lord with all of our hearts and lean not unto our own understanding and acknowledge him in all of our ways and he shall direct our path so the way that we are greater our ladder will be greater is if we trust in him. We have to see it from his perspective. So I just want to encourage you to trust in the Lord with all of thine heart. And don't lean in unto your own understanding. Because what, how we think, God thinks totally different. And we must see it from his perspective. So God bless you. We thank you for joining with us. As Bishop prepares to release this word, I just want to surrender a prayer. Oh, gracious Father, we come this morning. We thank you for another day. We thank you for our life. We thank you, God, for loving us like you do. Lord, we thank you for being so faithful unto us. We lift up the man of God, Bishop John C. Brown, to you this morning. We ask that you just have your way in him, God. Holy Spirit, reign in this place this morning. Speak a word to your people that one may be helped, one might be delivered, and one might be free, God. Change our mindset, God. Help us to do your will and not our way. We love you with all our heart, God. And I just ask you right now to deal with the man of God and help him to release this message, God. I cover him in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over his life. Lord God, help him to surrender to you. Use him, God, for your glory. None of Bishop John C. Brown, but all of you. Holy Spirit, have your way. Speak to us this morning. We need a word, God. Speak to us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The scripture is Romans 12, 1 through 4. And it reads, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is what is good and acceptable and perfect the will of God. For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, all members have not the same office. Amen. Praise the Lord. I just want to praise the name of the Lord for a brand new day that wasn't promised to us. This is a day that God has given us, another day of mercy, another day of grace, another day where we can lift up our hands to God and offer up a sacrifice of praise with the fruit of our lips. This is the day that the Lord has made. We want to thank you for joining us this morning on listening, all you audience listening in this morning uh, to all our Facebook fans and uh, followers. We 
we we honor you out there. We we are praying for you, and most definitely we are praying for all the members that are uh, associated with associated with the Temple of Praise Community Church. I am so glad that God has uh, blessed us just another week to be in the house of the Lord. Uh, I want to say I miss all the members uh, at the church. I will be seeing you very soon. I just want to say that I, I love you very much and I miss you and and uh, I, I feel you in my heart this morning. Uh, if you were here, hallelujah, I would um, be uh, just happy to see you. And so I just thank God. I thank God um, for his Holy Spirit. I just bless God this morning. I, 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 I praise God for all the things that he has blessed us with. I thank God for his anointing that destroys every yoke. And I believe that God is going to do some exploits in somebody's life. I believe that God is going to raise somebody up to be prophets and priests. And I believe that God is going to do something great and mighty in your life. Because the scripture declares that God is able to do exceeding abundantly above what we even ask or think according to the power of God that lives in us. So I pray that as you listen to the message on to this morning that you would open up your ears and your heart and hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. My wife, she read the scripture out of Romans, the 12th chapter, the first uh, four verses. And there is a, um, a way of lifestyle that God uh, desires us to live. And it is very important that we as believers, we as people of God, uh, honor God with our bodies. It is very important and vitally uh, necessary that uh, we be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. And if I was going to leave a thought with you on this morning, my thought would be to change your thoughts and it will change you. Change your thoughts and it will change you. I found out in my study that psychologists teach us that there are two mental laws that contribute heavily to our mental state of being. In other words, whether we're happy or whether we are sad, they are, first of all, number one, the law of concentration. And number two, the law of substitution. The law of concentration, it states that whatever we dwell upon grows in our own life experiences. Mm -hmm. And whatever we think about on a continual basis, it becomes a part of us. And yes, we become what we think. And watch this, the more we dwell on something, the more we have of it in our lives. So our minds should be able to think on those things which are above. God wants us to be able to dwell on positive things. And even though there is some negativity all around your surroundings, the way you think is the way you're going to be. Because the law of substitution states that our conscious mind can only hold one thought at a time. Mm -hmm. it, it, it makes no difference to our mind whether the thought is negative, it doesn't matter, it, or, or if it's positive, it can only hold one at a time. But, however, we can choose to substitute negative thoughts with positive thoughts, thus changing our mental state of being. And I want you to understand that the Lord understood these principles when he inserted a couple of scriptures into the Bible. Now, let me just share with you a couple of scriptures uh, to tie in what I'm ministering on this morning. If you go to the book of Proverbs, the 23rd chapter around the 7th verse, a clause, it states for, it states that 
For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Mm -hmm. Another scripture that I want to give to you this morning is Isaiah 26 and 3. And Isaiah 26 and 3, it says that thou will keep him in perfect peace, uh huh, whose mind is stayed on thee. Because what? He trusted in thee. Uh -huh. Where is your mind this morning? Is your mind on negative things? Is your mind on positive things? Do you ever think of the goodness of the Lord? Do, do you know that if you can just sit down and, and think about the goodness of the Lord and how he brought you out of some situations, don't you know that you can stay out? Because your mind, hallelujah, is powerful. Glory to God. Now, here is where the rubber meets the road. We are what we are because of what we have allowed ourselves to concentrate on. Uh huh. If you find yourself an old, crabby, miserable, a negative person that nobody likes to be around, guess what? You're that way because you have allowed yourself to feast on a negative diet of crabby, miserable, negative thoughts. Mm -hmm. Let me use another example. Mm. If you bake a cake and it doesn't turn out like you want it to, you can blame the, the oven that you put the cake in all day long. But that won't change the outcome of your next cake. Mm -hmm. If you want to change the outcome of the next cake, you got to change the recipe. <laughs> if you find that you're not the person that you want to be, you can blame your circumstances all day long. But that will never change anything. If you want to change, change the recipe of your life, try substituting negative thoughts with positive ones. And you know what? If you'll concentrate on what's right in your life instead of all the wrong things, what's good instead of what's bad, what's sweet instead of what's bitter, you'll find yourself a totally different person. And the only thing that changed was you. Mm. Lord, I bless you because I am the head. I bless you, God, that you have called me the head and not the tail. That you have uh, declared that I am the, the lender and not the borrower. I, I thank God that I always try. You see, what am I saying? I'm speaking those things which be not. As though they were. Yes. In order for transformation to take place in your, your life, you got to learn how to speak whatever you want from the Lord. And this is why we have to trust the Lord. Mm -hmm. When you learn how to operate in faith and when you learn how to trust the Lord, you can cast your cares upon the Lord and, and, and let the Lord take control of your cares and cast all of your burdens upon the Lord and quit worrying and quit stressing about the cares of, of life and just throw it in the hands of God and learn how to trust God. That's when you learn how to walk in faith because faith is the substance of things hoped for, yes, and it's the evidence of things not seen. Uh -huh. Just be, just even when you take that same scripture and you utilize your faith and change your thoughts, the Bible say that he that cometh to God, he first must believe that he is God and that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. How many people out there are seeking the Lord and believing that your next move that God's hand is going to be up on your next move. That whatever uh, uh, you're going through, whatever your situation is, and I know we're in a pandemic, but a pandemic don't mean anything to God. Because when you change your thoughts and you trust in the Lord, 
Hallelujah. Don't you know that you, you are turning it into the hands of the Lord that he will move on your behalf? Lord, I trust you for what you're doing in my life. So let me just give it to you one more time. Mm -hmm. There are two simple mental and spiritual laws to happiness in life. A psychologist didn't even invent them. Guess who? God did. Number one, concentration. Proverbs 23 and 7, a clause, one more time. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Number two, substitution, Isaiah 6, 26 and 3. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he, what, trusted in thee. Uh-huh. You see, happiness comes when we stop wailing about the troubles we have and offer thanks for all the troubles we don't have. Uh-huh. When I look at the next fella and I look at his cross, I don't want his cross because his cross just may be too big for me. So, Lord, I thank you for the cross that you have allowed me to bear. Glory to God. Let me tell you this. For who has known or understood the mind, the counsel and purposes of the Lord so as to guide and instruct him and to give him knowledge. God wants to give you knowledge and God wants to bring revelation and he wants to impart increase in your life if you let him. The Bible said in Revelations 3 and 20, he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man shall open up that door, he said, I'll come in to him and I'll sup with him and he with me. God wants to give you specific, direct instructions, but you got to open up your heart. And you got to trust him in your down setting. You got to trust him in your hard times and in your flaws and in your mistakes and in your haphazards. You got to learn how to put it in the hands of a mighty God. I hope I'm speaking to somebody's situation right out there. You see, we, as people of God, the Bible says this, but we have the mind of Christ, the Messiah, and do hold the thoughts. In other words, the feelings and purposes of his heart. 1 Corinthians 2 and 16, the Amplified said that. Uh huh. You know what is, what is so exciting? Isn't it exciting to realize that you can hold the thoughts and feelings and the purposes of God's very own heart in your heart? Uh-huh. Isn't it thrilling to know the creator of the universe, the creator of heaven and earth? He wants to be one spirit with you and transmit his thoughts to your mind? Mm -hmm. And this is why he said to let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I thank God for the mind of Christ. I thank God that when I wake up in the morning that I can praise his name. His name is powerful. The Bible says that there is no other name on the heaven and earth whereby we must be saved. That name of Jesus is a very powerful name. You know why? I can give honor to his name because I, my mind has been transformed. Uh -huh. I think like Christ think. And the only way you can think like Christ thinks think is you got to know what the word says about you. We have went off of everybody's opinion, asking everybody's opinion of, of who we are. Have you asked God about what, who you are? If you Know who you are. You don't have to go around asking anybody about who you are. Because God brings clarification and validation upon your life. In 1 Corinthians 6 and 17, it says that when you were joined to the Lord, you became one spirit with him. Uh -huh. He came into union with you so that he can talk to your heart to heart. Uh -huh. And so God wants 
you in this harmony with him so that his thoughts can become your actions. <laughs> Glory to God. He wants uh, you to walk so closely to him that you never lack power to overcome the evil of this world. And we know there's a lot of evil that's going on in this world. But when you get God working on the inside of you and you get the living word of God living on the inside of you and you get an impartation of the Holy Ghost, it's going to lead you. It's going to guide you into all truth and righteousness. Don't you know that you are the seed of Abraham? Glory to God. Don't you know that you are valuable to God? Don't you know that you are an asset to God? Don't you know that you, you, in your coming in and in your going out, he said he's going to bless you. Glory to God. You got to believe that God's hand is upon you and you can overcome evil. He wants you to be so in tune with his spirit that you are able to feel his heart of compassion toward those around you who are hurting or bowed down with sickness and pain. You got to learn how to have a spiritual discernment for even those who are broken hearted. And God has given you power and granted you authority that you may lay hands upon the sick that they may recover from any manner and any sickness of disease. Uh -huh. That is how anoint, much anointing God has granted over a Christian life. He wants you to consent to become one with him. Just as he has committed to be one with you. So he can reach out through your hands and fulfill his purposes in the earth. And so you need to make a fresh commitment today. If you haven't made a fresh commitment with God to walk in union with your God, if you've never surrendered your life to God, if you have never given God your heart, if you have never repented of your sins and asked God to come and live in, live in your heart and accept Jesus as your personal savior, this is a great time to do it. Give your attention to his spirit in your inner man. Make up your mind to and be determined to yield to his voice and not to the voice of the world or the flesh. The flesh can lead you places that you don't want to go. I want you to understand that you need to determine to yield to his fresh leadership uh -huh, of your life. And not to the traditions of men. I want you to ask yourself. Ask yourself. Number one. Do I realize the, re the reality of Christ living on the inside of me? 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. It tells us. He says that examine yourself. Every man should examine himself. To see whether you are in the faith. In other words, test yourself. Uh huh. We've been uh, pointing the finger at the other brother and pointing the finger at the other sister and trying to tell them about their faults and trying to look upon their uh, uh, mistakes. But have you, when was the last time you looked upon your own self and examined your own self to see where you stand with God? And so the Bible teaches us we need to, uh huh. Take some inventory of our own house. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus in you is, is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. And test means to prove. Uh -huh. My next question is, what voice am I listening to in times of crisis or decision making? And so the call of the flesh for gratification. Uh-huh. The call of the world to act as to as it says. The word of God as it applies to the situation you find confronting you. And the last thing I'm going to give you and I'm going to bring this message to a conclu conclusion is the same chapter of Romans. Romans, the same chapter, only thing, a different chapter. Romans 8, verse 12 through 15. Look at what it says. It says, therefore, brethren. 
We are debtors not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. Uh huh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. I want you to understand that, underline that, ye shall die. If you live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Underline that. Ye shall live. It goes on to tell us that for as many are led by the spirit of God. They are the sons and daughters of God. My question to you is, are you a son or a daughter of God? It goes on to say, for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Uh -huh. But ye have received the spirit of adoption. Whereby we cry, Abba Father, Abba Father. What am I saying? Pastor, I'm saying to you, allow the mind of Christ to flow through you. By faith, you can have your mind renewed if you will begin to read the word of God and study the word of God on a daily basis to the best of your understanding and ability. And what you don't know, the Holy Spirit will teach you some things. And so I want you to begin to apply that part of that that applies to you in your daily responses to, to life. And so once again, the last thing, therefore, he says, I urge you. Brothers, he said, I urge you. In view, in view of God's mercy, he's urging us. He's compelling us. He's reminding us to offer our bodies, your bodies, my body, as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. He says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then ye will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. And this is a written directive of God's will. He pleads you, don't conform to the world. Change your thoughts. Change your mind. Change your actions. Change the places that you go. If it ain't no good, don't be hanging out in places, being with, a, being with ungodly people who are driving you away from your God. Maybe you may have to change the crowd that you are around. Uh-huh. Maybe you need a, a, some brand new friends that love God with a passion. This is no time to be playing around. People are leaving this place. And some people are leaving with Jesus. And some people are leaving without Jesus. And you don't want to die mm -hmm, and be without Jesus. You see... Uh, the last enemy that we have to defeat is the enemy of death. Mm -hmm. The enemy of death. God took the sting out of death. He conquered the grave. Uh-huh. Yes, he did. Because death was the last enemy that he had to defeat. But death. Dying means gain for the believer. I want you to understand that. To die means gain. The Bible said, what profit is it for a man to gain the whole world and to lose his soul? The last scripture is, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. If you want life, give your life to Jesus. This is Bishop John C. Brown, the pastor, overseer, under shepherd of the Temple of Praise Community Church. I love you and thank you for listening on in uh, and hearing the word of God on this morning. Peace.